Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. After a few months, we have the pleasure of company of Dr. Tathagat Roy. Um, last time we spoke to him, he had just quit as the governor of Meghalaya to come back to West Bengal to be part of the BJP campaign as they were preparing for their assembly elections. The results, as you know well, uh, haven't quite turned out in BJP's favor. Worse, the results for the recently concluded Kolkata municipal elections uh, has also not been very good for BJP. In fact, it was expected that BJP would do well, Kolkata being an urban area. Can we have the numbers, please, of the Kolkata results? So you, as you can see, the final tally of 144, TMC got 134, BJP got 3, left got 2, Congress got two and others got three. So this is something that we are going to talk, but I would like to uh, you know, in, uh, bring in our guest of the evening, Dr. Tathagat Roy. Dr. Tathagat Roy, Namaskar and welcome to P. Guru's channel. Namaskar. So Dr. Roy, I, I would like you to take us back from that moment when you decided to rejoin active politics in Bengal, uh, being a member of BJP for a long time. Sir, I would like you to tell us your story of what you felt in the last few, in the last 18 months or so, as this thing went through, there was preparation time for the assembly elections, then what happened, and now why it seems like it is plumbing new lows, that is the BJP party. What is the magic elixir that Mamta Didi has, and, and anything else that you think will add to this discussion. After all, we all know, we learn more from our mistakes than from our successes. Take it away, sir. Right. Thank you, Sri. Now, you've asked me to speak on the last 18 months. It has not been altogether a very pleasant time, to put it mildly. I was relieved of my charges as governor in 2020 August. I came to Kolkata to receive a good welcome from a lot of supporters uh, at the airport. In fact, I was quite scared that the way they had uh, crowded the place, I was scared of a COVID infection. Fortunately, that did not happen. Happened much later, but that's a different thing. So one complaint that they were right through uh, mouthing is that the old BJP people, the people who had built up BJP from scratch at a time when people used to laugh at the BJP in West Bengal, those people have been totally ignored. Instead of that, the floodgates have been opened for people from Trinamool Congress and a whole lot of other parties to come in who had no connection with the BJP's ideology, BJP's thinking, BJP's methods. They just came along and they were given much later, much later than that, they were given election tickets, but immediately they were given positions of power. Now, immediately after coming back from Shillong, where I was last posted, I uh, went and saw the persons. I'm not going to name names, you know, because I'm still with the party. It wouldn't be very nice to name names. But I'll tell you the substance of it. You see, right after coming back from Shillong, I went to see the persons who were in charge. I saw several such persons. And after uh, some four or five visits, altogether, considering all the persons, I got the impression that I am not needed here. I am one of those old BJP people, you know. I have been doing the doing BJP since 1990, ever since I gave up my job in the Indian Railway Service of Engineers. And uh, I joined the BJP the very same day. When I joined the BJP, people used to laugh at me. Oh, you are crazy. You are going to do BJP in this leftist state. Funny. There's no way you can get anywhere doing it. But I believed in the ideology, so I went and did BJP. Then when I uh, found that I was not wanted here, I was not only not needed, I was not wanted here. So I withdrew and remained where I was. I gave several written representations in secret 
to my buddy bigwigs they were i don't know what attention they these representations received but there wasn't any tangible difference in the manner in which the election campaign was being done i'll tell you what exactly was wrong but before that let me go to uh, i mean jump the gun and go to why the how and why the um, trinamool congress that is mota banerjee's congress how and why they managed to draw, get such a thumping majority and uh, win at the hastings you see mota banerjee is a very shrewd person very very shrewd person she may give the impression of being an irascible um, emotion driven person she is nothing of the sort it's all a put up job and she is she understands the pulse of the people very carefully and she uh, tailors her acting to all that pulse now what she did is first thing i mean this is all my theorizing uh, but uh, i think i'm not very far wrong first thing that she figured is that the communists had been power in power for the last 34 years since so from 1977 to 19 uh, to 2011 so if the communists could remain in th- uh, power for 34 years in spite of doing so much misgovernment why can't i copy their methods and do the same thing there were differences between her and the communists not in terms of ideology because she has no ideology her ideology is that i am supreme i am everything just follow me nothing else aham brahmasmi yes sorry aham brahmasmi <laughs> aham brahmasmi yes she is very well put aham brahmasmi and right now of course half a brahma has been added to that that is her uh, nephew abhishek and the two together they constitute the present uh, incarnation of lord brahma so this is the sort of a party that she had but uh, in regard to the you know, unscrupulous methods of running elections winning elections and running the government she almost followed the communists to the letter i'll give you a few examples but first thing what she did is i'll try to um, zero in on that first she figured that quite correctly that west bengal has about a 30% muslim majority or oh, sorry muslim minority and like all minorities they vote in a block and they are easily swayed by their imams their religious gurus they are also educationally and uh, culturally backward so she decided that i must garner this whole bunch now the communists also used to do it but the communists because they had an ideology they sort of tailored it to uh, to uh, match their ideology mamata had no ideological baggage so she had no problem she just went on doling out sops one after another she uh just to give one example she started from government funds in a supposedly secular country she started a bhatta um, that is uh, allowance for imams of mosques because they do a great social duty we went to court against that saying that this is not permissible from government funds in a country like this uh, in a in a country like india we won but eventually she got it done through very devious and sagacious means but at this time the bjp had enacted the ca and the nrc you know ca stands for the citizenship amendment act and nrc stands for the national register of citizens and after enacting these laws the bjp did not do a necessary Uh, publicity necessary propagandizing among the people to convince that this was good as a result of that the muslims indian muslims who had nothing to fear from this the indian muslims came to the conclusion that they are going to be persona non grata 
and they consolidated their support to Mamata. With the result that when the results came out, I mean the election 2002 or 2021 uh, election results came out, she had practically on the entire chunk of Muslim votes. You understand what it means to get a chunk of 30% Muslim votes. In addition to that, she could always, with her being the incumbent in the incumbent government, she could always scrape through another 18% of Hindu votes. And with that, she sailed through. As opposed to that, the BJP got 38% votes. I'm talking about the assembly election. The recent yes. municipal corporation was a, was a different story altogether. So with this, she sailed through and the BJP lagged behind. Now, in addition to this thing, something that the, the communists did and Mamuta followed to the letter is what I call povertarianism. It's, it's not my coinage, the word. It's, uh, it's fairly well known in politics. Povertarian, povertarianism. That is uh, basing your politics on poverty, being anti-prosperity. It works this way. See, I'll uh, give you an exact case study, a, a confession by an ex-CPM person who is late now, who is dead now, and therefore I can mention his name. His name was Amal Datta. He was a barrister, that is a lawyer, and he happened to be the nephew of Jyoti Basu. Now this Amal Datta, later on, he got disgusted with communism and he left party, he left the party, he also left politics. Amal Datta once bared his heart to me and said that, do you know how the CPM functions? I said, how? He said, I was a member of a parliamentary committee called the Public Accounts Committee. It's a very powerful committee. It can uh, hold the government uh, on the, over the coals. And as a chairman of that committee, I had to make trips to different parts of India. I went to Bangalore. In Bangalore, I found that the, the people who are engaged in floriculture, arboriculture, that is growing of flowers, they were doing very well. Why? Because particularly in winter and also in other seasons, in winter, no flowers don't grow in temperate countries, in Western Europe and United States. So they export flowers to these countries and then they, they make a lot of money out of it. The uh, Karnataka government had arranged things in such a way that their, the whole process could be very streamlined from a flower um, garden to the airport to the destination. So Amal Datta got the idea that I could do it in my constituency also. So he, he was at that time the man, member of parliament from Diamond Harbor constituency. So he went and he proposed it to his party. His party bigwigs, they said, his comrade taken leave of his senses or what? Amal Datta was surprised. He said, why? He said, if you do these things, people will come by money. They will get rich. And then who will look or look at us? They will simply ignore us. So we need to keep people at a lower level, at a, at a level of gentle poverty, so to say. We don't want them to be rich. We don't want them to be prosperous. We want them to be in this state so that they can, uh, we can throw crumbs at them, you know. We can throw crumbs at them and they, be, they can be satisfied with those crumbs. This is this actually I had theorized at one point of time, and I'm showing you this little diagram. This is a management scientist by the name of Abraham Maslow, Dr. Abraham Maslow. He had postulated a pyramid like this, which is called the Maslow's pyramid, which is really a, a hierarchy of needs. The, at the bottom of the pyramid, there are physiological needs and there are safety needs and there are social needs also called love or belongingness needs. Then there are esteem needs and there are self-actualization needs. These meanings are plain, but still I'll just add a few words in explanation. The yes, same, uh, physiological needs are roti kapra makan, usual things. 
Next level needs are uh, safety needs. That is, roti kabra makan for tomorrow day after. Once, if I am deprived of roti kabra makan, if I don't get enough to eat, then I'm not going to bother about what is going to happen tomorrow. But if my today's meal is assured, I'll, I'm certainly going to think of tomorrow's meal. So this is called safety. These are called safety needs. Then the next level is social needs or belongingness needs. Now we go to higher order needs, higher order needs, you know. There's social needs. Then we go to esteem needs. Uh, social needs means a person wants to be loved, to love someone. Belongingness, he wants to raise a family. He wants to have children. He wants to have a wife. Uh, he wants to have his, um, uh, he, uh, his desire satisfied. We're from sexual desire all the way up to all the other desires that he has. So these are the third level that is social needs. Above that, there are esteem needs. When the social needs are satisfied fully or partially, actually this thing, this pyramid is, it is not as if it is beyond criticism. A lot of person have uh, criticized it. But even so, I find that this is a very sort of very um, lucid method of explaining human behavior under certain circumstances. Then there are these esteem needs when a person wants to uh, feel honored, feel wanted, that kind of thing. And finally, there are self-actualization needs when a person tries to, this is the highest order need, when a person tries to be what he had in his uh, mind, he, he had imagined in his mind to be, that is the highest state. This need is perhaps not felt by everyone. Now, Maslow's basic point was that this is, um, I'm sorry if I'm taking a little time theorizing, but it's no, very no, important. We're doing fine, sir. We're doing have, fine. Because you, right, because you have a very uh, very uh, cultivated, very erudite bunch of listeners, so they will understand. So Maslow's point was that a lower order need should be satisfied before uh, we go to a higher order need. This appeals to common sense also because Unless one gets roti kapra makan for today, he's not going to think of roti kapra makan for tomorrow. Then uh, after uh, um, that tomorrow, he will think of uh, the social needs. But until this roti kapra makan satisfied, uh, is satisfied for today and tomorrow, he won't think of social needs. The entire strategy of the communists, which Mamata Banerjee has copied, is that Keep people confined to the lower, two lower order needs. Keep people confined to the lower order needs so that you can throw crumbs at them. The whole thing works out to be very cheap because crumbs don't cost money. But if you let them go to the higher order needs, then they will demand things which will uh, become difficult and which are difficult to satisfy. If you are in China, you can run tanks on the uh, uh, chests of the people. But if in a country like India, you, you can't do that. So you, it is important that uh, people are kept down to the lower order needs. And this is something that this is, this is called povertyism. And this is one of the things that has, uh, that Mamta and the communists have followed. Now, the other things that they have done is total politicization of the administration and police. You know, our entire democratic setup is based on the uh, political neutrality of the permanent civil service. The permanent civil service are not supposed to do any politics and the, uh, the elected people, they are not supposed to poke their nose into the nitty gritty of administration. They have the mandate, they lay down the rules, they uh, lay down the policy and it is the job of this permanent civil servant to implement those policy without finding out what is exactly wrong. I mean, whether this is correct, this is not, that is decided by the ministers. Now, if you try to, um, if you try to politicize the, um, uh, the civil servant, civil services and the police, you arrive at a situation which is totally uh, 
uh, opposed to the sort of democracy that we imagine. And I'll just give you an example of what this is like. You know, my uh, somebody, that is my um, uh, son-in-law's family, my elder, I have two daughters. My elder daughter's husband is a Kannadiga from Bangalore. So when uh, this, um, she was, she got married over there. Then after some time, I met her mother-in-law. She lives in Bangalore. They are natives of Bangalore. And I asked her that by that time, the BJP government had come to power and knew, I knew quite a few ministers. So I told her that uh, this BJP government has come to power here and I know quite a few ministers. So if you need anything from me, you let me know. So she said, why should I need anything from a minister? Why should I need to have to do anything for the BJP, with the BJP? If I need something, I'll go to the magistrate, I'll go to the police, I'll go to all these people. See, this is the difference. This is unknown. This kind of mindset is unknown in West Bengal. Here, everything is political. Everything is political, whether a person is uh, going to be admitted in a college, in a school, in a college, what job he is going to get among two people who are vying for a job, who's going to get the job, whether a particular road should be repaired, this road should be repaired or that road should be repaired, whether this patient should be admitted to a hospital or that patient, everything is a political decision here in West Bengal. This kind of prostitution of the entire civil machinery is one thing that the CPIM had done and Mamata had very gladly followed it. You understand that this, what kind of advantage this gives to the uh, incumbent government. You want to say something, sir? Yeah, I have a quick question, Dr. Roy. So yes. if the CPIM had done this thing, so the yes. workforce was all CPIM. So did they en masse defect to the ideology of TMC? When they came to power? They en masse defected to the TMC. TMC has no ideology, I told you. The only ideology is, as you rightly said, Aham Brahmasmi. I <laughs> am the truth. I am everything. I and my nephew, we are everything. And uh, uh, she has no ideological baggage. But en masse, yes, they all gravitated to the TMC. That is it. So this is more or less the situation there so far as the Trinamool Congress is concerned, what they did. Plus, they had got an advisor, an extremely wily advisor in a person called Prashant Kishore. What this Prashant Kishore did is he had found out the weaknesses. We all human beings have weaknesses. He had tried to find out the weaknesses of his adversaries. He had tried to find out the likes and dislikes of the people of this state. He is not a Bengali. He is a Bihari. An extremely bright person. And then at the same time, I must say, a totally devoid of any conscience. I mean, the way a, a lawyer would defend a, a person criminal. who is a criminal, who he knows perfectly well has committed a murder, yet he will do his best. It is Prashant Kishore is a person like that. I mean, he was doing a job like that, getting paid very handsomely. What I understand is that for the assembly elections, he was paid 500 crores. That is 50, 500, that is 5,000 million rupees for the assembly elections. These figures nobody knows, but generally that is the figure that is making rounds. Right. Now, this is what the... Trinamool Congress or Mauta Banerjee's party did. Now I shall come to what the BJP could have done and did not. See, here once again, I have to, I have the handicap of not being able to name names, but um, nevertheless, I'll try to explain to uh, how things worked, uh, how things uh, happened. See, the first thing, the first mistake they made was not understanding the nuances of Bengal politics. See, every politics in every state has its own nuances. It is not like a uniform country like the United States. United States, if you run from the from New York 
in one corner to California in the other and from Florida to um, Washington State, you would not find a whole lot of difference. The language is the same. The religion is more or less the same. The same kind of people, they talk, they talk the same way. It is not like that in India. The first thing, the language, uh, language is different. Secondly, apart from language, the mindsets of the people are very, very different. Now, what these gentlemen who were put in charge of the uh, BJP's election machinery, what these gentlemen did is they imagined that the methods that they had perfected in the Hindi belt, they will use them indiscriminately. And they did not try to find out what these nuances were. Now, I uh, should not be uh, boasting about it myself, but I thought that I could educate them on for these nuances because uh, these uh, things are um, these things are very uh, sort of intricate. You know, there are fine things which you must understand. The Bengali Hindu psyche, not so much the Bengali Muslim psyche. The Bengali Hindu psyche has been overshadowed by uh, the uh, by leftist thinking over the last 80, 90 years, no less than that, 80, 90 years, then uh, this is one thing that they had completely forgotten. They tried to polarize the polity on uh, Hindu-Muslim lines. Now, that is first thing um, uh, telling someone that uh, all Muslims are anti-Indian. First thing, it is wrong. It is an untruth. Secondly, it will create a totally negative impression in a state like West Bengal. What I used to say, I would have told them, is that we have nothing against Indian Muslims. They are our uh, uh, honorable citizens just as much as a Hindu or a Christian or a uh, Parsi is. The only thing we have is we we will not countenance any Bangladeshi infiltrators here and we'll drive them out. That is number one. Number two is we will use the same yardsticks, the same criteria for judging the deeds of Hindus and Muslims. Over here, you know, this is the so-called secularism of, the, of uh, the late lamented Jawaharlal Nehru and the left was that uh, it's uh, it's uh, something a maxim, something like you know. In it used to be said in England once upon a time, the king can do no wrong. It is like that a Muslim can do no wrong, or if Muslim has done wrong, thou shalt not speak ill of the Muslim. With the result that I have seen with my own eyes in the Hindus in East Bengal, which is now Bangladesh, being persecuted horribly, horribly. But nobody is, no communist is saying one word about it. Whereas they will bring the sky down on what is happening in Chile, what is happening in Cuba, what is happening in Nicaragua, what is happening in Vietnam, everything. Except what is happening next door to their very first cousins. So this is one thing that they had done. And this was carried to extremes by Mamata Banerjee with the result that she garnered that 30 percent votes and this was not put to the people in a properly nuanced way as i was saying second mistake that they made is uh, that uh, no issues were identified no issues were identified in every election you have to identify two or three issues and you have to fight the election on the, those issues with the result uh, i mean with the with the message that we have to, uh, this is how, this is one uh, issue on which Mount Avanik has totally failed and we are going to help you. We are going to help the people overcome this problem. No such thing was done. Instead of that, uh, the, a very leading person, there was a quartet, you know, and there was a quartet, four people who were running the elections and a leading person among them he went all over the state, very leading person. He went all over the state saying, Mar dunga, gar dunga, dafna dunga, dead body ka line laga dunga, sab to asuka ye nadi baha dunga, this kind of thing. Now, that kind of language is, is tolerable from a 
street level politician. It is not toler tolerated from a state level politician, not in West Bengal. But he did it with the predictable result. And the trouble was that he had studied only up to class eight. He was, uh, uh, he had uh, qualified himself as a fitter mystery and he had studied only up to class eight. And uh, he was, he, he was not capable of saying anything more than this. And this, he, he went on um, uh, mounting these things. Then there was uh, this, um, the way in which the party played into Mamata Banerjee's hands. You see, this quartet who were there, the head person of the quartet was a person from the Hindi wealth. In fact, two of them, were, three of them were from the Hindi wealth and one was from uh, West Bengal itself. The three people from the Hindi belt who, as I said, that they, they were, uh, they had run the elections like they were running it in the Hindi heartland. These three people flooded the election scene with Hindi speaking leaders. These Hindi speaking leaders and came, came and they um, uh, did a sort of marathon running all over the state, north to south, east to west, and uh, talking to people. Now, Hindi is a language which is understood by the urban people here in West Bengal. But the rural people understand it only imperfectly and the women not at all. Now, this kind of thing without, I mean, this kind of uh, election management without understanding what was happening was something that um, alienated the people because Mamota at the same time was saying Banglar make a chai. Bangla Bangla make a chai. West Bengal once uh, she was never, uh, she never used to call it West Bengal. She used to call it only Bengal. So Bengal wants a Bengali girl. Bengal wants a Bengali woman. And uh, the BJP was playing into her hands because the BJP was bringing in this kind of uh, alien leaders, alien in that sense. In fact, I was I, uh, I have heard that people were asking that is it true that if the BJP comes to power, we'll all have to go vegetarian. Most Bengalis are non-vegetarian. They said, the, we'll, we, shall we all have to go vegetarian? Shall we all have to um, sing religious hymns in the morning? Something like that and keep a janeu. No, sorry, keep a tiki, shikha. Tiki. That, yeah, shikha. Yeah. yeah, shikha, shikha. So this is, uh, we call it tiki in Bengal, Bengali, we call it tiki, the proper word is shikha. So this is the kind of impression that they gave and it worked uh, smack in the, uh, by this, by doing this, it's uh, played into the hands of the Trinamul. And finally, the candidate selection, the candidate selection was scandalous, scandalous, unspeakable, unspeakable. Candidates are supposed to be one, uh, fielded on the basis of primarily winnability. Sometimes yes. more than winnability, a uh, consideration is done for that candidate's position in the party hierarchy. That is understandable. But absolutely new recruits from outside, people who never had any connection with politics, film stars, B-grade TV stars, Women, of course, be great TV stars. They were, they came into the party and they were fielded as candidates. And the, uh, the kind of money that was given to them and the money that was spent on them is astronomical. It's scandalous. The whole thing was wreaked. And not just that, in most places, there were, uh, allegations of corruption. Why this person was uh, fielded? Why this person? What qualification did this person have to uh, represent the BJP? That kind of question was done. I need not go further into it. This thing has been, I have brought this to sufficiently to the uh, attention of the people through uh, the social media. I'm not going to go into this any, any further. But the candidate selection was one very, very um, very sordid chapter in the debacle that BJP suffered. Now, after that, we all know what happened. The BJP got 38% of the votes. The Trinomul got 47% of the votes. 
and uh, I think 47 percent. We gave CPA, yes, 47 percent of the votes. And um, the uh, after that, what you would expect is that you uh, you would expect that after this debacle, the uh, party would do some rehashing of the whole thing to study uh, to um, to uh, rehashing of the whole election results to study find out where exactly we had gone wrong what was the reason why we did it as a matter of uh, um, uh, we had uh, we suffered this debacle nothing of the sort instead of that the party bigwigs that quad quartet Three of them never came back to West Bengal. They decapped. And the uh, one which was remaining, he kept on patting his back, saying that we have taken the tally of MLS from 3 to 77. So what more do you want? Actually, did they fight for 77? Did they fight for 77 seats? In um, beginning of April, while the election was going on, the election had uh, begun, if you ask any of these BJP bigwigs, what was the reason why, um, I mean, uh, what was the result that you are expecting? They would all say more than 200. We are going to sweep. We are going to, um, you will not, um, uh, the uh, TMC will not be visible above the horizon, that kind of thing. And the ultimate result is this. And as a result of this not analyzing, as a result of this not um this uh, uh, uh not uh, uh, having a relook at what they had done the corporation elections were a disaster the earlier one was a devil this one was a disaster bjp has come down to the third position in the kolkata corporation nesting and uh, that was that so, Mr. Uh, so, uh, so, Mr. Sri Iyer, I have come to the end of my talk. I have tried to do justice to the subject in this space of uh, about uh, how long have I taken? About forty minutes. Not thirty. Yeah, that yeah. Is, is the optimum length of a speech more than that? People get bored. So I will yes, uh, yes. Try now close and thank you very very much. Uh, Dr. Roy, thank you so much. But my my question is like the 800 pound, pound gorilla in the room. Now, mm. uh, I have two questions. The first question is, was mm. there spectacular success in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections? Sort of give, gave the BJP some sort of an overconfidence because they thought that this formula worked for Lok Sabha. Therefore, I shall apply the same for assembly elections was there something like that absolutely it was there it was there in fact it worked there you know we know of boons in disguise this is a curse in disguise getting 18 votes put so much complacency in the hearts of this the uh, bjp leaders this quartet that uh, they all imagine that they are going to sweep they are going to run roughshod over the uh, Trinamool. While Trinamool just went on this whole business in a very um, um, uh, very uh, painstaking way. Next question, sir. And this is a really big, big question. Because this is one thing that has really disappointed not just the Hindus in India, but Hindus worldwide. The post -war Very few violence. As, um, few people have been as disappointed as me. Believe me. I, I know. So, so here you are. You are an erudite person. You've been a BJP person for a long time. You've seen service in the IRS, and you forsake that, and then you came and joined for the work of uh, bettering people. And and then this kind of thing happens where you are completely being ignored. I don't know what goes on in the minds of uh, the top two who I think run the party and they also run the country. I don't know. So we, we don't know. But sir, your read on why the party did not come to the help of the worker on the ground when they were screaming. I have had uh, hangouts in, in P Gurus where I had actual people telling their story. What kind of stories they were told? It was 1947 all over again. 
Yes, yes. You are right. You are right. Among other things, that was one of the things that Mota did. And it was there uh, because the police was completely, um, uh, what the police was completely politicized. They took no notice of this uh, killing by Trinamool. In fact, the whole process started with the killing of an MLA, a member of the Legislative Assembly in a place called Hemtabad in North Bengal. And then after that, I think on the whole, some 150 BJP workers have been killed. And not much has been done about them in, from the leadership. What is most surprising and most painful is, you know, in a place called Chuchura, which is the headquarters of the Hooghly district, in Chuchura, this um, the headman in the quartet who had stayed back, he always moved surrounded by some 10 security men. He went to that place to, uh, I don't know what, what purpose he gave to the, the, to the audience. He went to that place and the people all shouted that you do something for us, sir. We are dying. We are all BJP people. And he said, if you want to do BJP, you must do Tyag and Tapasya. I mean, imagine the hypocrisy that he was saying, uh, doing the, uh, you must do Tyag and Tapasya when he himself is surrounded by 10 security men. So this is this had put the BJP people complete the uh, ground level workers completely off. In fact, one of the reasons for the disaster in the this SM, this corporation election is that these people, a uh, huge lot of people, particularly the old BJP workers who were motivated, who were ideological BJP, ideologically BJP, those people did not participate. They, as we said, they, they had sat down. They did not bother about the party. So, it just boggles the mind that already this uh, lack of empathy, not even showing up, and it contrasts with what Mamata Didi did. There was one party worker that was imprisoned somewhere, a very, very low level. And she lands down there, does dharna, makes a lot of noise, makes it look as if, you know, her crown jewel is, is being touched. So this contrast is really, really striking, uh, Dr. Roy. And, and if this is how BJP wants to win elections, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but they have really lost the plot. I, my two cents, Dr. Roy, not knowing the top two is they are either overworked or they are thinking that we have a certain formula that works in some places. We're going to same apply the same formula everywhere, and and that doesn't work. It spectacularly blew up on their faces. I mean, look at look at Andhra Pradesh, look at Tamil Nadu, look at Kerala. They have not been able to open their account, and if they, they and they cannot put the Hindi principle here because it is more they needed to perfect what worked for them in Bengal and then use that. Exactly. Among the southern states, they could make a dent in Karnataka only because they had a very strong leader in Yadiyurappa. Yes, Other yes. And they have not, been, mean, able to, they have not yeah. been able to put up new leaders. And, and, and even now, Yadiyurappa has been eased out, pushed out, whatever we want to call. That's, that yes. could be another problem for them, even in that what one state possible. in the south, which has voted possible. for them. So. The, yes. the, this kind of thinking, I mean, it blows my mind, uh, Dr. Roy, that yes. good intellectual state level leaders are not being, you know, encouraged. In fact, they are being actively discouraged. Oh, okay. I saw some of the tweets from the, the BJP Bengal leaders about you. I mean, they were practically, you know, dissing you. That's the only word I can say. And this is very, very discouraging, sir. See, I have, but I am still not been able to find out why they rejected me, why they did not let me in on the election process. I can guess some reasons, but um, I would rather not mention them here. Well, uh, it, it's unfortunate because somebody with your chops, your smarts would have made a huge difference because I still, you know, this is the census data. 
West Bengal is the most literate state in India. They, they I understand. That Kerala. I thought that is Kerala. Well, uh, uh. Kerala can read and write, but they, 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 I, I, this is what. They, okay, maybe the level of education is the highest in in Bengal. May not be the number of people. I, I think some somewhere in, in Bengal is number one in this state in the country. Not just in education, say. So they that they value this and the messaging that went horribly wrong. And and then they could have done some course correction for the Kolkata Municipal Corporation. Precisely, election. precisely. This is the exact word I used, course correction. This is the precisely the exact phrase I used, course correction. They should have done course correction. For course correction, they should have analyzed what had gone wrong. Instead, nothing was done. Instead, they went on beating their chests. We have brought up the, the tally from 3 to 77. What more do you want? Precisely. Well, so so the KMC is a goner now. And I'm going to say, stick my neck out and say, in many of these corporations and panchayats, they are probably not going to do well. So what if you were given the reins to the BJP state organization and given a free reign to do whatever you want? They did do that in Tamil Nadu. The guy called uh, K. Annamale, who's an IPS officer, similar like you are an IRS officer, he has resigned his job and joined politics. They have given him a free reign and he is doing a good job. And now, for uh, so if you are you know given that kind of a role, what would you do, sir? One, two, three, top three things. First thing, I would identify the issues on which we can fault the Trinamool Congress. One is minority appeasement. The second is the uh, total economic degeneration of the state. And the third is um, unemployment, Illegal. which is basically a, a, a facet of the economic degeneration of the state. So these are the economy has been totally in shambles, the economy of West Bengal, employment generation. And you know what she is doing instead of generating employment? She is just doling out money. Some uh, um, uh, Bengali Nobel laureate called Abhishek uh, Banerjee. Banerjee, yeah. Uh, yes. This guy has come and said in public, I don't know whether it is her prodding or not, that if you put money in people's hands, the economy will improve. She is doing exactly that. Now, by that, you can destroy the backbone of a people. That is what she has done. Very unfortunate. But, you know, sometimes these things are unavoidable. In fact, uh, uh, viewers, for your benefit, I'm going to have a, uh, a talk show with Dr. Subramanian Swami about the long term effects of freebies and how it can damage the economy and the society over the long period and how long it will take to come back. That's a topic that's going to be discussed very, very shortly. So please do tune in for that program. But for today, I have just the, one point, you know. I yes, sir. Please go ahead. One point to make before I, I before you close this session, I saw a question over here mentioning that I am an IITN. Actually, I am from Bengal Engineering College, Chipur, the second oldest engineering college in uh, India. And in our times, when I entered the uh, entered engineering in nineteen back in nineteen sixty one, it was considered at par with. The uh, only idea at that time was Kharagpur. It was considered at par with IIT Kharagpur. So I'm not an IITN, but I'm from another alma mater, which is of which I'm very proud. Just wanted to mention it. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tathagat Roy. See, this shows the attention to detail you are giving, sir. This is small print that is just going across. You're talking. You're also picking up on this thing. My, I mean. I, I, you know, you, to me, you age is just a number. Let's put it that way. You are very, very well qualified, very good thoughts. And, and I hope and pray that sanity prevails and that the BJP leadership sees you for the value you can bring and, and, and gives you a much more important role. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar.